Uh, without further ado, I would like to announce our next speaker, Ms. Lucia Bicknell, to talk to us about emotions and music. Adrenaline. Have you ever noticed how quickly your mood can change from just one song? A rush of emotion, nostalgic memories, or a surge of intense feelings that can all occur from the power of music. On multiple occasions, I have found myself wondering, how does this happen? I've decided to take on the challenge to understand why and how music and emotion are connected. Hello, my name is Lucia Bicknell, and welcome to my Masterworks presentation on how music and emotion are connected. Science. There are many different, different perspectives on how music and emotion are connected. In this section, I'll discuss the science behind all of it. First, let's take a look at what's happening in your brain. The, the cerebellum. The cerebellum is one of the smallest portions of the brain only weighing 10% of its total weight. That being said, it contains 50 to 80% of the brain's neurons, which are specialized cells that transmit information. The cerebellum is crucial to music, as it is also connected to the limbic system, which is the emotional center of the brain. Psychologist Daniel Levitin mentions that because these two systems are linked, it may explain why timing, Rhythm, movement, music, and motion are all tied together. Music is more than entertainment. It is regulating a force of our moods. Emotions. Music is powerful. It, it has the ability to change the way we think or feel. As we, can all, as we can all relate, listening to music can heavily trigger our emotions and change our moods. So what exactly are emotions? Emotions are temporary state of mind and can, be simply, and can be simply described as ways in which we feel. Have you ever felt happy all day long, then in an instant feel angry or upset? External factors trigger emotions in different ways, and this can often affect our overall mood. There are all sorts of external reasons why our emotions are triggered. Maybe someone cut you off on the road or you failed your exam. Luckily, as mentioned, emotions are only, only temporary states of minds. So if you're in a bad mood or feeling down, maybe your favorite song will come on the radio and cheer you right back up. So why do we like the music we like? It is around the age of 10 to 11 when most children take a real interest in music, even if they didn't express much musical interest before. Research, researchers point out that it is around the teen years when they start having different musical preferences. You will often hear adults say things like, our music is so much better than your generation of music. <laughs> adults are referring to the music that was most influential during their lives, which was typically during their teen years. The reasons why we, why we, we remember our songs from our teenage years is because it is, it is the time of self-discovery and when we are most emotionally charged. Our amygdala, another area of your brain that's responsible for emotions, take the memories of something important. 
Music and musical preferences become part of your personal group identity and distinction. There will always be a list of songs that whenever we hear the beat and rhythm, we just can't help ourselves but sing our heart out, get up and dance, or just feel really excited. Beat and rhythm. Have you ever heard the DJ yell, let the beat drop? In order to be moved by, mu moved by music, both physically and emotionally, it helps to have a predictable beat. There is also the groove to the music, which is the quality that moves the song along. When a song has a catchy beat and a solid groove, it pulls you into this other world where you don't want to leave. There is no formula on how to create the best groove. It all depends on the performer and the performance, no matter what is written on paper. Although we don't usually talk about the groove in classical mu music, most operas, symphonies, sonatas, concertos, and string quartets, they all have definite pulse, beat, or groove. The conductor's job is showing the musicians where the beats are, stretching out um, for some emotional communication to the audience. Feeling where the pulse is is a crucial part of musical emotion. Interview findings. With a better understanding of how of the science behind how music and emotion are connected. I wanted, to t I wanted to test what I learned in a real life scenario. During this section of my master's project, I conducted an interview to a variety of test subjects. Students between the ages of 11 to 15 and adults between 20 to 40 were selected. I chose these age groups because I assumed I would get a wide range of preferences. Three songs were played, all different genres. After each song was played, the test subjects were asked to answer a series of questions based on their emotions at that moment. These results enabled me to further develop my knowledge on how music and emotion are connected. The first song I played was 1980s hit Back in Black by ACDC. Being a hard metal rock song, I was curious to see how many of the test subjects would feel anxious, angry, or even annoyed. Surprisingly, almost everyone felt happy during the song. A grade six student, however, felt anxious. This can be attrib attributed to the fact that she's likely unfamiliar with the song, as it is a song that is not from her generation. Also, it was interesting, but not surprising, to see that most of the adults felt nostalgic. Clearly, it is because this is a very popular song of their generation. Therefore, they've developed many memories and experiences from the music. The second song I played was Handel's Water Music by George Frederick Handel in the year 1717. This classical, pe this classical piece is played by an orchestra. Most su test subjects claim they felt sleepy, calm, and peaceful. This is likely due to the slow but filled tempo. You can see that, adults, that all the adults felt happy, whereas none of the students did. This music, from neither gener this music is from neither generation. So why do the adults feel happy and the students do not? I believe it is because as you get older, you begin to develop a broader range of musical appreciation. Whereas the younger students are solely interested in hearing music they are familiar with or connect with in the moment. For the third and final song, the test subjects listened to Hall of Fame by the script, which was released in 2012. I discovered that most people felt sad, even though the message of the song is very positive and uplifting. Could it be because the, low, the mellow and calm sound of the music does not quite match the motivational lyrics? Or perhaps it's because the younger students have developed sad memories that are tied to the song, seeing how it is the song of their generation. As we know, our emotions are not easily explained. Overall, my interview findings was a great way to compare and comprehend how music and emotion are connected. There are many things I was able to observe with the knowledge of science, such as how people's, emotion dif people's emotions differentiate from a song just because of their age or gender. I have also learned that not everything can be explained through science, especially as music and emotion are both very abstract concepts. As we now know, music and emotion are greatly connected to our experiences and memories. Structure of a song. Do you ever wonder how musicians go about making music? Do musicians have a plan to make their audience connect on an emotional level? If you aren't familiar with, a cer with the certain techniques, 
it can seem impossible to understand or even do it yourself. There are certain musical formulas that help with it creating a good song. But starting at the basics is to simply understand the key elements of a song structure. Creating a song structure can be as easy or as complicated as you like. Most songs in popular genres normally have between three to six different sections or parts. I'm going to play a part of a song called Don't Forget Me by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This is a great example of a basic song structure because it shows how easy it can be to write a song. The song consists no more than four chords, played in the same order. Even though the amount of chords played are very minimal, it is amazing to hear the dynamics used to create different effects. It is used to either increase or decrease the intensity, and the chords throughout the song consist of being A minor, F, C, and G. The structure of the song is intro, verse, bridge, verse, chorus, br bridge, verse, chorus, solo, and verse. So, So what exactly are the basic elements of a song structure? There are five key elements the songs most, that most songs have. The introduction, verse, chorus, bridge, middle eight, and outro. These terms may sound strange, so let's take a closer look. Introduction. The introduction comes at the beginning of the song and is typically only music and no words. The intro can also be used to hook the listener by playing the chorus and create suspense for the rest of the song to come. Verse. The verse is like a poem, typically with an A-A-B-B or an A-B-A-B rhythmic scheme. You will usually hear the pattern repeat itself in a song at least two times, but containing different lyrics. Chorus. The chorus is the main idea of the song. You will often hear the song title sung in the chorus. The lyrics of the chorus may change slightly, but usually stay the same. Typically, the chorus is pretty straightforward, containing about four to eight chords. There is a change of dynamic to make it stand out from the rest of the song. This contains volume, intensity, catchiness, and timbre. Timbre means the quality or character of musical sound or voice as, dis sound or voice as distinct from its pitch and intensity. Bridge. This is literally referred to the bridge between the verse and chorus, or chorus and verse. This is especially useful when you have a key change from one to another to make the transitions more smooth. Middle eight. The middle eight is the section usually in the middle of the song that is meant to break up its repetitiveness so it doesn't continue the same sequence of verse, chorus, verse, chorus. This can change the whole feel of the song. It can either make it or break it. Again, the dynamics are usually different to add variety. Outro. Finally, the outro is like the conclusion of the song. Like the intro, this can just be a repeat of the, chorus or, the verse or chorus or the chord structures, but can be totally different. Remember, there are no rules. Building intensity during a song. First of all, most of the intensity from songs build up around the chorus, and the verse and bridge is where the song stays more mellow. Most, chorus, most choruses have an intense feel to them, characterized by constant change, activity, or progress. The different ways to build intensity can include volume dynamics and using various instruments. Crescendo or diminuendo. Crescendo refers to the increase of volume, where diminuendo refers to decrease of volume. Building the overall volume will obviously affect the intensity. So as a musician, you must use volume purposefully to ensure you do not lose the whole feel of the music. Decreasing the volume will lower the intensity of the music, a technique often used to transfer from chorus to verse. Drums. Drums have, drums have a massive role in building up intensity because they hold the beat of most songs. 
Using the snare, tom, or kick drums, leading in and out of the chorus or bridges, all create a massive effect. Guitars and bass. Just from raising the volume of the car from the guitar to simple picking and then to full chords can heavily influence the sound of the song. Lastly, adding bass notes to your melodies or chords will also boost the sound and intensity to your music. Keyboards and piano. Keyboards and, and piano can totally change the effect and intensity, but only when you use, only when used correctly. Moving from single notes or harmonies will add intensity and depth, while heavy bass notes will do the same. My process. Understanding how music and emotion are connected remains a fascinating concept to me. I've been singing and playing since, I, since the age of three, and I've always loved the pure enjoyment music has brought to my life. In more recent years, I've begun to write my own songs and music. I've learned that writing your own lyrics and creating music that com complements those lyrics can be simple, simple or extremely complex. For the final part of my Masterworks project, I wanted to create and perform a song that would evoke emotions in others. The process of writing my own lyrics was surprisingly easy. Once I had the inspiration and knew what I was writing about, it all came down to being creative and expressing the feelings I was trying to project. Most of my inspiration came from the song Brave by Sarah Berrios. I found that listening to her song was a great way to get started at the structure of my own song. I also definitely couldn't have done it without the help from all my music teachers. Amy Usher, Hamish Thompson, and John Stiver. Working with them through this process was a privilege. I am particularly grateful for when they got me through the stressful period when I was running out of time to get my lyrics written. Their ongoing steady support helped me reach the result I have now. The creative process is such an unpredictable thing. One day, a whole verse came to me while I was brushing my teeth. It took me by surprise. I had to rush downstairs, grab my notebook, and quickly write it down. I found this worked really well for me. My lyrics came out as my lyrics came out really naturally. Okay, I am now going to perform my song called Straight Up. What you want to say to me? 
What's it gonna mean? What's it, what's it gonna mean? Tell me. Don't protect my insecurities. One thing I know, the truth will set you free. Give it to me straight up. Give it to me straight up. Give it to me straight up. Give it to me, straight up, straight up. through researching and understanding the science behind it, conducting an interview, and analyzing the structure of a song. <coughs> I've learned that music is very much so connected to, connected to the science and how your brain functions. There are multiple processes working in your brain when you're listening to music. In general, you don't even know it. Learning the science behind the functions of your brain helps to improve why we like the music we like, what our emotions, and beat under them. The interview, the interview findings were a great way to compare what we knew about the science and it working in real life. It was amazing to see the different emotions everyone conjured up listening to the multiple different songs and the contrasting preferences based on the age or gender. The structure of the song was a substantial way to see that songs can be as complicated or as simple as you like. All you have to know is a few key components, such as instruments and the eight basic structures to write your song. After extensive research, I can conclude with certainty that music and emotion are inextricably linked. I first want to give a huge thank you to my external advisors, Amy Usher and Hamish Thompson. Amy was a massive help throughout the year. She's my vocal teacher and was invaluable during my whole singing and writing process. She was an inspiration in how I shaped my song and a catalyst for getting my lyrics written. I'm also so grateful that I had the privilege to work with Hamish. He was a huge help with melodies um, and figuring out how I was gonna piece my song together. I'm especially grateful for his patience when I was trying to figure out my own melodies. He would always let me figure it out even though I'm sure he already had many of his own flying through his head. He would always let me, oh, sorry. I also want to thank my internal advisor, Chelsea Luchensky. She was the one who, was, who guided me through everything this year. I'm so grateful on how she went above and beyond what was required of her. I'm so grateful on how she, um, I'm so grateful on how supportive and dedicated she was um, throughout the whole year. I also want to thank John Stiver, who was my guitar teacher. He was, he gave great musical feedback and was always curious and encouraging. He also helped me with my paper <laughs> by giving me a book that really guided me through my academic process. Lastly, I want to thank my parents. I have a lot of out-of-school activities, and they were always supportive in helping me manage my time, as well as complete my master's project. I couldn't have done it without them. I'm forever grateful for this incredible year and everyone who has de dedicated some of their time to me as I pursued my goals. Thank you. I am very proud to announce that Ms. Lucia Bicknell has met all the requirements of the Masterworks program. Yeah.